Today, I'm gonna to share some biblical truth with you. Truth I wished I had learned a long time ago. Truth that has literally changed my life. And I know it'll do the same for you. One, trusting God and trying to please God are not the same path. In fact, they're opposites. God never asked you to please him. He asked you to trust him. Trying to please him is based on your efforts. Trusting is based on his. And the best part is, when we're trusting him is when he's most pleased with us. Two, the devil's only attacking you because he sees you as a threat. He is terrified of what God placed inside of you. So he will do everything in his power to make sure you never figure it out. But hey, you just did. Three, no man is your friend. No man is your enemy. Every man is your teacher. Four, the devil can't steal what belongs to you by divine right, but you can give it to him anytime you choose. So don't do that. Five, you are in right standing with God right now. Not at some later date when you get rid of your sin. If you could have got rid of your sin by now, you would have, but you can't. But Jesus can. You see, you're in right standing with God right now because of what Jesus did. Nothing you can do could ever get you there. So realize, own, and enjoy the position that Jesus died to give you. Six, I know somebody told you that God will never give you more than you can handle. But the truth is, God will often give you way more than you can handle. So stop thinking he gave you this because you can handle it. You can't. He's allowing this because he knows you can't handle it. And he wants you to press into him. We need to let him use these things in our life to build you and shape you and mold you and make you into who he's called you to be. Seven, the Bible is not just a list of rules. Stop avoiding it because you don't want to read about one more thing you're not allowed to do. Every single word in this book brings freedom, peace, and fulfillment. Start seeing it as the greatest love letter ever written. A love letter from God to you. Because that's exactly what this is. Eight, the disciples did not drive a Honda, even though the Bible says they all came in one accord. Nine, being buried and being planted look the exact same for a season. Stop walking away from what God asked you to do because you think it's dead. Try staying planted and grow some roots. Remember, you plant a seed, not a tree. Let God grow some things in your life. 10, expectation is the cup that God will fill up. Start expecting God to provide, heal, restore, and work through you every single day in amazing ways. But always remember, the expectation needs to be on who, not how, when, or what. Because expectation is the cup that God will fill up. 11, try to live with the mindset that I've got a lot to teach, but so much more to learn. 12, stop giving up and quitting when life gets hard. Let go instead. Quitting is an act of despair. Letting go is an act of trust. Quitting is you giving up on God's plan. Letting go is trusting God's plan, even when it looks completely ridiculous. 13, Stop praying for victory and start praying from victory because Jesus bought that for you. 14, repentance doesn't mean being ashamed and crying about it. Repentance is when you change your mind and your life follows your new direction. You see, repentance doesn't happen when you cry. Repentance happens when you change. 15, the reason we never read about Jesus riding any bicycles in the Bible is because he breaks every chain. He breaks every chain. He really does. 16, every single promise in the Bible is yes and amen over your life, but they aren't automatic. You actually have to go get them and speak them over your life. Give it a try. It's incredible. 17, don't get mad when you do have faith, but it feels like the mountain isn't moving. You see, God may be moving it one rock at a time. 18, you can't have fear and faith at the same time because they both want the same thing from you. They both want you to believe something that hasn't happened yet. Now, which one you choose to let live rent-free in your mind? That's up to you. 19, hiding sin doesn't make you feel better or help it go away. Exposing it does. 20, because you have Jesus living in you, you are the light of the world. A flashlight does no good in a well-lit room. If you wanna see your light become effective, you have to take it out of the church and walk in to the darkness. 21, the thief on the cross next to Jesus was not Paul's dad. That is not what he meant when he said, my old man was crucified with Christ. Come on, you guys are just silly. 22, if the Bible tells us Jesus didn't come to condemn anyone, what makes you think he gave that job to you? 23, 
A man with an experience is never at the mercy of a man with an argument. So stop arguing the Bible with people. In Revelation, it tells us we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. That's Jesus. And the word of our testimony, that's your story. So go out and use it. 24. Go out each day and make a difference. Stop trying to make a living. If your goal every day is to just go to a job so you can provide for yourself, your wife, your kids, your family, you've just taken God's job away from him. He is your provider, not your boss, not your spouse, not your parents. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all things will be provided to you. 25. You don't have to build your identity in Christ. You simply need to believe it. 26. Don't fall from grace, fall with grace. And last, but definitely not least, it's all about love. Love covers a multitude of sins. Love always trusts. Love isn't self-seeking, self-motivated, or self-made. We can only truly love others after we've accepted and received the love of our Father. You see, he doesn't have love. He is love. It's not a coincidence that the letters L-O-V-E are in the word revolution, because that's exactly what it's going to take to truly change this world for Jesus. Go and think about that for a minute.